Welcome to Southern Crime, a new podcast where we look at different crimes from the South. The more twists and turns, the better. This podcast discusses serious crimes and is meant for those 18 years and older. Listener discretion is advised. Please consider a donation through listener support to help us keep things going. And while you're here, please hit that like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Y'all, I was looking at my phone right before I went to bed around midnight-ish last night and uh, saw this case pop up. Remains of two small children were recovered last weekend on the property of a mother who was arrested November 4th. Marie Sue Snyder, 32, faces endangering the welfare of children charges stemming from an investigation involving her living son, the old Lycoming Township Police Department said. After Snyder and her partner were arrested, authorities began a search for the alleged buried remains of Marie Snyder's two female children. The girls had not been seen by anyone outside of the family since 2015. They recovered human human remains November 6th and 7th. On November 8th, police announced the bodies are of six-year-old Nicole Elizabeth Snyder and four-year-old Jasmine Jean Snyder. I went looking for pictures because we we do upload a video on YouTube um, at some point after this goes up. And... You know, I try to put pictures on it, obviously. There are no pictures of these girls out yet. Um, Nicole, the six-year-old, was killed in 2016. And Jasmine, the four-year-old, was killed in 2017. Both were buried in the backyard. Additional charges against Snyder have not been announced. Her partner, 26-year-old Echo Lane Butler, faces the same charges as Snyder. Both D.A. Gardner and I agree that this situation is a travesty of colossal proportions and this investigation will not conclude until all evidence is gathered and analyzed. Interviews are conducted and justice on behalf of the two deceased innocent girls is achieved. That was a statement from the um, old Lycoming police chief, Chris Kreiner. The father of the girls had not been allowed to see them since 2015 after an abuse order was filed against him. The couple was living with Butler's parents and an investigation began in September when investigators learned that Snyder's seven-year-old son was not enrolled in school. Snyder told investigators in September that her daughters were living with a friend, but she did not provide a name of the caretaker or location. The son was not potty trained. Remember, this is a seven-year-old son. The son was not potty trained and could only count to 10. He was located on Friday and is in the custody of Children and Youth Services. The child is doing well, and no health-related issues have been reported. Police ended their search at Snyder and Butler's residence on November 7th. The property where the girls were found is in Hepburn Township, about 185 miles northeast of Philadelphia. Um, You know, one of my questions right off the bat is, what about Butler's parents? I what were they told or were they part of this? Um, because, you know, little girls go dis- disappearing in the middle of the night. And, I mean, they've been disappeared for, what, five years and four years. So um, what about his parents? Um, just That's just tragic. But as I was reading it, I was thinking about a case that we have going on in my county which is Effingham County, Georgia. Um, They were in back in court, I think last week or the week before. Um, So I'm going to go through a timeline of what happened with that case. 
Um, it began with a welfare check in Effingham County. 2012, the Department of Family and Children's Services works with the Crocker family in Effingham County for nearly a year following reports of abuse to Elwyn Crocker Jr. DFCS documents show a caseworker meets with the parents and children separately at least twice a month. Their father, Elwyn Sr., and stepmother, Candace Crocker, go to therapy and take parenting classes. In 2013, the case is closed with Department of Family and Children's Services. November 2016, Elwin Crocker Jr., 14, disappears. He is not reported missing by his family. October 2018, Mary Crocker, 13, disappears. She is not reported missing by her family. December 20th, 2018, so just a couple months after she was last seen. Members of the Effingham County Sheriff's Office are called out to Rosebud Place area of Guyton just after midnight. Authorities say they responded for a welfare check and a possible missing juvenile. It quickly turned into a death investigator. The bodies of Mary Crocker, who turned 14 on that day, and Elwin Crocker Jr. are discovered buried in the backyard. Effingham County Sheriff Jimmy McDuffie, who is awesome, by the way, announces the arrests of three people, the children's father, Elwin Crocker Sr., 49, their stepmother, Candace Crocker, 33, and step-grandmother, Kim Wright, 50, are all charged with concealing the death, death of another and cruelty to children. Jimmy McDuffie said, I've been doing this 41 years, and a while ago, I almost broke down in tears. Um, the interview with him, his voice was cracking. December 21st, 2018, the bodies are positively identified as Mary and Elwin. On January 23rd, 2019, one of our local news places um, interviewed the uh, Department of Family and Children's Services about earlier reports of abuse. And they said, since we closed our case, since the concern was no longer present, there was no need for us to be further involved with the family. On January 29, 2019, Elwin Crocker Sr. and um, Candace Crocker, Candace's mother, Kimberly, Kimberly Wright, Wright's boyfriend, Roy Anthony Pratter, and Crocker's brother, Mark Anthony Wright, are charged with felony murder and other charges in connection with the children's deaths. February 9, 2019, the community held a memorial service for the children. Um, March 5, 2019, Elwin Crocker has his first court appearance and authorities discuss the abuse to Mary Crocker. He did admit that Mary Crocker was in fact kept in a dog kennel naked in the kitchen in the common area of the house and she was zip tied so that she would not get out. Brown said Mary was starved, tased, and beaten for not exercising, not doing chores, and stealing food. She said that all the food that Mary was given was mixed with vinegar. She was kept in the dog kennel uh, 24 hours a day and was sprayed with water while still inside for showers. Her joints would get so stiff that she would be strapped to a pool ladder to straighten back out. A photo found on Crocker's phone allegedly showed Mary next to the kennel emaciated and badly bruised. April 17th, 2019, the five defendants all appeared in court and pled not guilty. Um, February 2020, they uh, prosecutors say that they intend to seek the death penalty against Elwin Crocker Sr., Candace Crocker, Kim Wright, and Mark Anthony Wright. The death penalty is not sought against Roy Anthony Pratter. Um, October 30th, 2020, Candace Crocker, 
and Roy Anthony Prater pled guilty to marriage to murder, not marriage. Candace Crocker faces life in prison without parole. July 15th, 2021, in the case against Elwin Crocker Sr., Kim Wright and Mark Anthony Wright, Judge F. Gates Peed, yes, that's his name, says he wants to see a jury selected and ready for trial in 2022. Um, you know, one of the things that, that was said in the heat of the moment when everything happened um, was um, the sheriff said, we have all of these neighbors coming up and while we're here and saying, um, you know, I saw this and I saw this. And, and his statement was, if all of these suspicion, these people that had suspicions had called 911, we would not have gotten to this point. Um, I, I think that there is a fear. You know, I, I was a first responder and I still have fear about calling 911 because am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing? Um, am I going to be wasting their time? Et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, it, it's not for me, it's not a, I don't want to get involved. I certainly do not want to cause anybody any undue stress. Um, so it's, it's hard. But you know, the, the, the police departments, uh, the EMS always says, if you see something, call. Let us check it out. If there's nothing, then nothing will happen. Um, that's, you know, as long as you aren't calling for somebody skateboarding down the, the sidewalk in front of your house, you know. <laughs> so, um, these are just two very heartbreaking cases, and God bless all of those children and every child that is in a situation where they are being abused and have no way to get out of it. I just don't have any words. Thank you all. We will see you later. Bye.